You're not too stuck up or too proud this morning. Just help me worship God for a few minutes. Say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I bless your holy name. Lord, I magnify you. Happy Mother's Day to all the amazing, amazing, wonderful mothers. You may be seated in God's wonderful presence. Uh, I'm so excited at all that God is doing. You know, uh, I, I particularly want to thank all the men. And I'll get to that and why in a minute. All the men for what they planned for Mother's Day. Uh, you know, I saw the, the myriad of texts, the gifts. Phenomenal, phenomenal job, man. I appreciate you. Thank you for celebrating our mothers. Um, it's good that I say it now so that, you know, I'm not going to mention what we got for Father's Day last year, but just in case. <laughs> the three dollar ties won't work this year. I didn't mention anything. I'm just saying that. <laughs> oh, it was two dollars. Ah, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> but the men, we have some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful gifts for you guys. So honestly, thanks to all the men that gave uh, the planning. Are uh, so so grateful. Um, where's Uduak? And happy birthday, happy happy birthday. God God bless you. You're such a blessing to this house. Thank you so much for filling in where there was a gap, there was a void. May God always be there for you when you need him. In the name of the Lord God Almighty. It's about me. I saw about me earlier. I know. I don't want to mess up you guys' schedule, but let him give you a break. It's, it's your birthday and Mother's Day. So it looked like he was off today. So if you guys see him, just tell him he's been, he's been, he's been voluntold. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me teach this morning and we will jump into the rest of the celebrations. I want to teach on a Bible character that I know most of you don't know. 95% don't know. And her name is Jedida. And it's Mother's Day. And so I thought to use uh, a, a woman that can bring out uh, the grace and, and, and blessing that I want to spring this morning, but also beyond it just being for mothers, something that I know would touch everyone and everyone would, would, would see some of their life in her. And so today as we celebrate all the wonderful mothers, every surrogate mom, single mom, aunt, sister, grandma, bonus mom, anyone who stepped into that place of being a mother, I salute you this morning. God honor and bless you. I thank my mother. I thank the mother of my kids. Uh, you know, mothers are just amazing, 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 amazing. They can uh, do a million things at the same time and nothing gets dropped, you know, to, to every mother who's, 
you know, ever just needed 10 seconds of being in the bathroom by themselves. <laughs> and, and just looking for a place where they can just have, have a break. God sees and God knows. And so this morning, Jedida is a woman that, you know, her, her story is, 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 is so great. You know, one mother said that the easiest part is, is giving birth. That the hardest part is showing up every day. Every day, every day, every day. Every day you have to show up as a mother. Turn your Bibles with me, if you will, to 2 Kings 22. 2 Kings 22. It says, Josiah was eight years old when he became king. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. You see, I always tell you when you're reading the Bible, pause. Don't, don't, don't read it like you're just reading a story. Don't read it like you're just trying to finish it. Because when I'm reading this, first off, let's start with the fact that Josiah was eight when he became king. Now, I don't know about you guys. Maybe you have phenomenal great year, eight-year-olds. My son turns eight in a few months, by God's grace. I don't know about you. I don't know. <laughs> that I'll say, please, come and be the king of, of any nation. Now, he tells me he's the line leader at school. That's great. But Josiah was eight. The Bible says when he became king. And he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedida. That's who we're going to be talking about this morning. His mother's name was Jedida. This same account is in Chronicles. But why I'm taking it out of Kings is because Kings lets us know the mothers of the kings. His mother's name was Jedida. And Jedida means to love or to be loved. The daughter of Adaya of, of, of Boscat, verse 2. Says, Bible says, and he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father, David. He did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. So somehow this eight-year-old knows to do what is right in the sight of the Lord. And why that is very telling is because his father, Ammon, did not. His grandfather, Manasseh, did not. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that Manasseh was a wicked and evil king. You know how some people are just wicked, just, you know, Bible donkeys, I call them, so that they won't say pity or swearing. But read King James and see what he calls a donkey. And that's how some people just operate. But the, the proper word for it is they're being a jerk. So let me, let me be good this morning. His father was evil. His grandfather was evil. And he didn't take that to say that's how we are in this family. That's what my father did. That's what my grandfather did. At eight, he knew to be good. You and I will both know that his queen mother had a lot to do with that. As a matter of fact, the Bible says he walked in all the ways of his father, David. Was his biological father, David? No. As a matter of fact, there's 12 generations in between them. You can go, go count it later on. You know those scriptures where you get to and this person begat and this person begat and you just skip right past and you tell yourself you read three chapters in the Bible. From David to Solomon. From Solomon to Rehoboam. From Rehoboam to Abijah. From Abijah to Asaph. And it keeps going to Manasseh, to Ammon, all the way before Josiah. Twelve generations. But the Bible says that he walked in the ways of his father, David. That's a generational blessing where you get to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this person as my role model. This is who I'm going to pick. He walked in the ways of his father, David. Why? Because he had a mother that showed him how. He had a mother that said, you don't have to be like everything that's going on. You don't have to be like your peers. You don't have to be like any normal eight-year-old. At eight, his mother was showing him, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. Jedida is such an amazing woman. I don't know why we don't talk a whole lot about her. She's not as, 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 as exciting as, as, as Esther. We did that on our Wednesday Bible study, or, or, or Rebecca, or, or Deborah, and, and, and all the mighty, mighty giants. 
But Jedidah was a great, great mother. The standard of mothers. Second Kings chapter 23, the next chapter, it lets us know that she raised, according to the Bible, the greatest king. Most of us who was the greatest king, we say David automatically. And David was great, don't get me wrong. But how many of us know he had some shortcomings? As a matter of fact, when God was going to build the temple, David, God told him there's too much blood on your hands. The Bible, this is who they call the greatest king. It says before Josiah, there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, all his soul, all his might. Doesn't that sound like what Moses said and what Jesus said eventually? It says, according to all the law of Moses. Thanks, P.T. Preach, just finish the scripture. <laughs> according to all the law of Moses, nor after him did any arise like him, an eight-year-old king, an eight-year-old boy. How does he know to be this? Jedida. Jedida is teaching him. And he reigns for 31 years. Parents, our job primarily is to teach our children the ways of the Lord. That's what we are, stewards. And no better place than a mother to say here is the way that you should go. What made her so great? That she's raising this great man. Josiah comes and immediately he wipes out idolatry that his father had done. He wipes out all the crazy things that his grandfather had done. And Josiah says, no, we're going to follow the ways of the Lord. He had a vision and he was going. And ladies, sometimes you might find yourself in a difficult situation. You can be like Jedida and say, you know what? It's okay. I'm not getting what I should be getting from the other side. And I'm not going to go into details. So I don't man bash this morning. That's not what I'm here to do. But Jedidah said, you know what, Josiah? I'm going to teach you the ways of the Lord. I'm going to show you that you can be great. That you can do great things. It didn't matter that his father and grandfather could not do anything. They had no vision. You know, where I grew up, we called them NFA. No future ambition. Just wondering. But Jedidah says, let me teach you. Let me show you the way. And here's what we're going to see. How she transformed this eight-year-old to be king. And again, please don't let it be lost on you. That an eight-year-old can be king. An eight-year-old can be president. An eight-year-old can lead. Only because of the guidance he's getting. Let me tell you. What regular eight-year-olds do? I was reading something. It says, eight-year-old Mary wrote, Dear mother, here is the box of candy which I bought you for Mother's Day. It is very good candy. I know because I already had five pieces. <laughs> Carol is eight years old. Dear mother, here are two aspirants. Have a happy Mother's Day. Eileen wrote, I wish Mother's Day wasn't on Sunday. It would be better if it was on Monday so we won't have to go to school. And little Diane wrote, I hope you like the flowers I got you for Mother's Day. I picked them myself while Mr. Smith wasn't looking. Those are normal eight-year-olds. That's the kind of thing we expect eight-year-olds to say and do, but not Josiah. Josiah has the word of God in him. I'm going to show you in scripture where the Bible says he's reading the word. He's getting into the word. In 2 Chronicles 22, in our text, verse 8 to 13, Josiah told them, bring the books for me. And the Bible says that the scribe told him, here is what in the books. Here is what we've written down. And verse 13, 2 Kings 22, the Bible says Josiah is upset. He's like, that's not what Moses commanded us to do. That's not how we should be doing it. And he said, we have to do it by the way of the Lord. It says, now it happened when the king heard the words of the book of the law. This is Josiah. We're not sure how old he is here. If he's still eight, obviously if he's grown. 
The preacher once said, if the text is silent, be silent. What I do know is that he started at eight. He's growing now. But whenever this was, he was reading the, the books. It says it happened when the king heard. He tore his clothes. Verse 12. King commanded Hilkiah the priest. Saying, verse 13. Says, go inquire of the Lord for me. Saints, there's nothing we can do without the word of God. It's happy Mother's Day, yes, but every mother and everyone, ultimately, the word of God is what we have. Go inquire, go inquire for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book, what we call the Bible, where they're capturing everything. It says, for great is the wrath of the Lord that is aroused against us because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book. Here's a young king saying, our fathers are not doing everything that has been written in this book. The word of the Lord. Help me tell your neighbor, all you have is the word. That's it. That's it. You can try everything else. When Jesus was tempted by Satan three times, it is written. He didn't say, ah, I used it last time. Let me try a different thing. No, it is written. It is written because the word of the Lord is how you navigate life. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 it says that the word of the Lord is strong, is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, cutting asunder into soul and spirit, dividing the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Josiah said our fathers are not doing it well, that this book is where we should be. But again, when if I take the focus to Jedidah, because every story, you see all the angles that this queen mother is guiding him. You know how I know? The Bible tells us that Ammon was an evil king. So he obviously wasn't learning it from his father. And when his father left at eight, he's stepping into a role that he has no idea what to do. And at the young age of eight, Jedidah, his mother, is there to guide him and lead him. Jedidah was a, was a mother, like the Wesley mother. That out of 12 sons, it didn't matter that three died. It didn't matter that some of them had issues. She said, I raised every child with love because I knew from day one that God gave me kings. We have John Wesley, we have Charles Wesley that started the Methodist church said, if all my job was to do was to raise them and pour into them, I fulfilled my destiny. And sometimes it looks like no one sees, no one appreciates, no one is there to say thank you. Sometimes the child that you are trying to help, they say something, do something, and you're like, wow. But God says, stay there. The word of the Lord. I want to list out a few things that the word of God would do for you. Because that's all I was saying. You can study the life of Josiah. Everything that he did, he'll say according to how it's written. According to how it's written. That's someone that has studied the word. That's someone that has checked out scripture. Jesus, the same thing. It is written. It is written. David said, your word I have hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. It's the word of the Lord. The first thing that the word of God will do for you is that you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Psalm 1 says, blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man who does not sit in the way, who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. His delight is in what? Help me say it. His delight is in what? That's his delight. That's, that's what he's happy about. You get a high on the word of the Lord. Studying the word of God. I was saying how many of us probably don't know who Jedidah is. And it's true. But saints, the things that you want to know, you will know. Some people say sometimes I'm not good at names. That's a lie. There are at least 50 names that you know. You just know those people. You know if you are a Swifty or if you are Beehive. Thank you. 
Bible says his delight is in the law of the Lord. But verse 1, blessed is the man, that man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. You love God's word so much. It says, and he, in, in his law, he meditates day and night. Verse 3, he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. That brings forth its fruits in its season. Whose leaf does not wither. Doesn't matter if there's a recession. Doesn't matter what's going on. Your leaf cannot wither. It says, whatever he does shall prosper. The day I saw this scripture is when I started reading the word of God like crazy. Like, like it's a guarantee. Can you imagine that kind of guarantee? That there's nothing that you do, you will prosper. If you're in the word of God, you can sell water to a fish. They will buy it from you. Whatever he does will prosper. Joshua chapter 1 says the same thing, that we should meditate on the word of God. And I'm saying this, that this is how Josiah was the greatest king. We read it in scripture. There was none before him. There was none after him. Solomon, the Bible says, was the wisest and the richest. None before him, none after him. Different criteria. Because I know we have Bible scholars here. It says this, this, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Pity, I don't know where to read. Read Psalm 119. It will take you a whole week. It's the longest chapter in scripture. You can keep reading it. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. Where I referenced earlier with David was verse 133. You can take it every 10 verses. Second thing God's word will do for you is God's word will make you pure. Verse 11. David said, how can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed to the word of the Lord. Young man, young woman. Josiah, how can you be a king at eight? By taking heed to the word of the Lord. How are you leading God's people? By taking heed to the word of the Lord. Solomon, when he became king, Solomon said, I don't know how to do this, Lord. Says, guide me. What did he ask for? Wisdom. Lord, teach me. When you read Proverbs, you see everything that he's saying. It's in the word of the Lord. Verse 18, Psalm 119. You can open up your phone Bibles. It says, open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. Saints, anything outside of the word of God is motivational speaking. And that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to encourage you to study the word of the Lord and to show you how and lead you to get to that place where you, you, you're craving the word of God. And sometimes you go through things and you're like, Lord, I can't even remember any scripture now. Just wait a minute. It will take time, but it comes. The word of the Lord, the spirit of God on the inside of you. Third one. You will see amazing miracles in the word of God. Let me go quickly. Because I know it's Mother's Day. I said I have 25 minutes. God's word will revive you. God's word will revive you. There's nothing better than a word in season. Proverbs says that a word in season, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a fine apple. It, it brings healing to the soul. When you're going through an issue and you just hear a word that just soothes you, that brings comfort, that even if the situation has not changed, you have changed. It's the word of the Lord. And that's all Jedidah is teaching Josiah. Here's the scroll. Let's read it. Jesus, Luke chapter 4. Bible says that he opened the book. Jesus was reading the Bible. Why shouldn't you? He opened the book. He opened the book and found where it was written of him. We have to do that also. There's nothing else. The word of the Lord, that's how, we, that's how we live. The word of God is God. So every time you are reading God's word, you are seeing the example. You are seeing what it is that we should do. You are seeing how we should go. God's word gives wisdom. It gives direction. Psalm 119 Please study it this week. 
I have about 10 quotes of it whilst focusing on the word. Verse 105, it says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Pity, I don't know what to do. I ask them, have you prayed? Do you have a word? Because I know God is speaking. I'm not sure. Okay, let's pray together. Let's ask for God to, to lead us. Let's ask for God to guide us. Let's ask for the Lord to show us a way. Because in the word of the Lord, you have the promises of God. You have principles of God. You have the person of God. You see the process. You see the path in the word of God. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. God's word gives great peace. Verse 165. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. Nothing. Isaiah 26, it says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. And it's with the word of God. Let's put it back up, put that verse back up. It says that person will not stumble. Great peace, great peace. And I've told you before that peace is not the absence of a storm. Peace is the presence of God. Because when the disciples went to Jesus, do you not care that we perish? Jesus, don't you care? This, these bills are going crazy. Jesus, don't, don't you care? My, my, my spouse is just acting up and, and my boss is, has absolutely lost, lost it. Do you not care? The Bible says that Jesus rose up. He didn't clear sleep from his eyes. He didn't do any spiritual gymnastics. He didn't, you know, said shalom. Shalom, peace, be still. The Bible says that they wondered, said, who is this one that speaks with such authority? It's because of God's word. Great, great peace have those who love your law and nothing causes them to stumble. If you don't hear anything today, I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hear that you need to get back in God's word. You have to. Your memory is much better than you think. There's short-term memory, there's long-term memory. And the one that is long-term is just the things that we use very frequently. After a while, Depending on, you probably can remember two, maybe three phone numbers. Back in the day, you had to learn a whole lot more. But it's just by reason of use. If you get in scripture and you say every day at a minimum, I'm going to read the word of God. There's no excuse for it. We have so many things. I mean, you can Google whatever scripture on whatever topic. You have the Bible app. Use it. So we can read God's word. Lastly, happy Mother's Day. I'm finished. God's word gives you freedom. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 says, And you shall, Jesus said to them who believed him, If you abide in my word. You are my disciples indeed. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Verse 32 says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Shall we rise? Jedidah's legacy was that she taught Josiah the word of the Lord. She taught Josiah the word of the Lord. Typical eight-year-olds, don't say, bring the Bible. Let me see what's in there. It's the fact that you've taught him. This is the word that we go by. This is the word that we live by. Daddy, what should we do? Mommy, what should we do? Let's check scripture. Sometimes as parents, we think our job is to make sure they never miss 
a recital or swimming or soccer or book club. And all those things are great. All those things are phenomenal. I do all of those. But when it comes down to it, what are you teaching them? Because the Bible says that if you teach a child the way of the Lord, when he is old, he will not depart from it. You've given them that anchor. Seventy percent. There's a recent survey. Seventy percent of folks who claim to be born again received Christ before the age of 21. Because after a certain while, you probably think you know better than whatever it is you're being told. But can we teach these kids in the way of the Lord? Can we be like Jedidah? That you may not get mentioned that many times. But she taught this king, this young eight-year-old man, the ways of the Lord. I love this quote so much by Charles Spurgeon. It says, if God has spoken, listen. If God has recorded his words in a book, search its pages with a believing heart. If you do not accept it as God's inspired word, I cannot invite you to pay any particular attention to it. But if you regard it as the book of God, I charge you as I shall meet you at the judgment seat of Christ. Study the Bible daily. Treat not the eternal God with disrespect, but delight in his word. Delight in his word. Happy Mother's Day. I picked the life that emulates and just exemplifies teaching the word of God. Because that's the only way an eight-year-old can do it. Because some people would have balked like, who are you to tell us what to do? Even if they know it's the mother telling him. But he had scripture to go by. He had an example to go by. The word of God. The word of the Lord. The word of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I want us to pray this morning. Jeremiah 33 verse 3 says, Call unto me and I would show you great and mighty things that you do not know. I want you to just talk to God for the next few minutes and ask the Lord to open your eyes of spiritual understanding. Say, Lord, show me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, myself in the word of God. If God reveals to you Last week we talked about it. That the only way you know who you are. Peter said you are the Christ. And Jesus said you are Peter. It's from the word of God. Jesus told Peter flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Lord we are calling unto you. Asking that you show us great and mighty things that we do not know. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Show us through your word. Show us, Spirit of the living God. Father, we bless your holy name. Lord, I'm praying for a hunger for the word of God. A hunger for intercession. A hunger for the things of God. Raise up God chasers, O God. That like Josiah, the ones who love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our spirit, oh God, we will not turn to the left or the right, oh God. And we would obey your word in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your holy name. Jesus' name. Amen. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do all that is written in it. For then, then, 
Here's the kicker. It says, then you will make your way prosperous. Sometimes we like to quote it and we say, God will make my way prosperous. And that's good as a prayer. But Joshua's instruction to them was, if you meditate on the word of the Lord, you will make your way prosperous. And then you would have good success. And sometimes we see that where people are following the principles, even before they come to a knowing of God. This book of the Lord shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Observe to do everything that is in it. And then you will make your way prosperous. And then you would have good success. Amen. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day.